show uh, live. I am your host, Dan Richardson, and today we'll be talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1987 Season 1. So basically, this, like, literally, first disc here. We're talking about that. And yeah, this is. Uh, season 1 was only 5 episodes long, and it was the, you know, like, and it was basically the kickoff for basically everything Ninja Turtles. Obviously, the comic was a big success back 40 years ago, but 3 years after the comic success came this show in 1987. And that's what we'll be talking about. And also, this is in honor, you read the description correctly, this is in honor of the 40th anniversary. I will be doing three more seasons of this show, but I won't be doing all the seasons of the show. Or at least four, I'll, do, I'll be doing like four more videos, but three more seasons specifically of this show. Uh, and all that good stuff. So, here we go, let's do this thing. So, season one is about... Um, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo are the four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that you see on my shirt here. And they, um, you know, were living well, underground, not really in the shadows, but they were living underground. And um, the Foot Clan, this time being a bunch of robots, the Foot Clan are stealing a bunch of different pieces of technology in order to build something. But April O'Neil, a hard-hitting journalist doesn't not quite know what that you know what that is so she has to figure it out well tales old as time she gets a little too close to figuring out what's going on so the shredder's like okay it's time that we get this woman and you know do with what's what you know so they so the um the uh, Foot Clan basically goes to try to rough her up, but she gets saved by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And in the first episode, we get their origin. Uh, season one is five episodes long, if I did not mention that before. Basically, it's uh, it's like 100 minutes of episodes. And yeah, it's pretty fun, pretty good. Uh, and that's the kickoff of this whole story. Of course, also, um, we learned the reason why Shredder and the Foot Clan are stealing all this technology is so that the Technodrome, um, who was built by Krang, uh, can go, or, so the Technodrome can go back and get Krang's stone army, Krang being the big brain guy. Uh, is he on the back? No, he's not. Uh, the big brain guy. And, yeah, like, this is just classic Ninja Turtles. It's true to form. It's what everything after this show was essentially based off of, and it's great. And this first, like I said, this first season does kind of function very much like a movie. Uh, I believe, uh, I think I heard somewhere, granted this was like years ago, I could be wrong, but I think I heard somewhere that like specifically this first season was animated by the same people who animated Dragon Ball, I believe, while later seasons would be done by other um, animation houses, uh, like Milo Pony or something like that, animation house. Um, but I believe this season was done by the people who did Dragon Ball Z, which is why the action is as good as I think it is. It's definitely still the old 80s cartoon, but you can definitely tell that there's some cleanness to the action that, uh, and just cleanness to the animation in general that wouldn't be seen in future ep or future seasons because of uh, budget constraints. Also, like season I think three and f four or something like that are like, um, like 40 episodes long a piece. Like they were hitting the, like they were aiming high for the production uh, of the episodes on, on this show at some point. And yeah, it was, it's just very interesting just to see that happen. Um, and it's really cool to see how everything got started because this, because the show, the story of this first season really was, it really is the story of just the turtles, you know? them meeting April for the first time. Uh, Splinter explaining their origin to April after she's terrified. Um, you know, the how the, like, turtle car comes to be. The turtle car, or the, the turtle van, forgive me, the, the party wagon, the origin makes sense. You know, a problem that I kind of have with O3 is that Donnie is able to just 
miraculously make all of his amazing tech out of just complete garbage and it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense while in you know 2012 they tried to like ground it a little bit more and like yeah his early stuff is kind of made out of garbage you know like there's an old like in, uh there's an old uh nintendo entertainment system controller used at one point like so his 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 stuff at the beginning shows me out of garbage, but then he gets his hands on crane technology and he's able to upgrade slowly throughout the show. Um, o3 Donnie is just able to hit the ground running. He's making futuristic crap out of garbage. This show tries to ground it in some sort of reality. Air quote. Uh, he has to, in order to make, you know, the the party wagon, he has to like steal technology from. Uh, Baxter Stockman and stuff like that. It's really cool to see that. And it's just, like, really cool just to see these characters, like, get started. Uh, the freight, and actually something I didn't realize until a few years ago when some YouTubers I like um, reviewed the old Mirage comics is that the hero, the, the line that, uh, that Leo says, um, turtles fight with honor, uh, in the second issue of Mirage, Leo at some point says, heroes or turtles die with honor so obviously they're changing that to make it more kid friendly but like it was just really cool to go back and like see just how this how the whole turtle canon got started because this really is it like you know obviously certain things pick and choose between the mirage comics and this show but it's really this show that cements what the ninja turtles are going to be for the next 40 years of storytelling you know, when people think of the Ninja Turtles, they think of this. And that's why this show is this. That's why every shirt you've ever seen of the old 87, or of Ninja Turtles, is the 87 characters. Is because that's the most iconic version of the characters. And it's, you know, really cool. And I do have one negative, though. And... The negative just comes from the fact that, you know, the neutrinos are kind of annoying. Like, I understand that the neutrinos are supposed to be these, like, hot, rotting teens, and they're supposed to be this, like, counterpoint to the turtles. They're like, oh, the, like, the neutrinos are this fun-loving, you know, the, they're these rebellious teenagers from uh, Dimension X. Yeah, Dimension X, and Dimension X is, like, this horrible like hellscape that's full of all these wars and stuff like that the neutrinos are these fun loving hot riding teens and they're supposed to be harkening back to the 50s when teenagers like well not like me i haven't been a teenager in quite a few years but like teenagers like the ones that i have to hire to work at my business they're they just want to have fun and stuff like that you know like what sydney lopper said god damn it what sydney lopper said you know Teens just want to have fun. Well, unfortunately, the problem with that is that, like, and I think it's just because they, they're, like, they're having their regular cast voice the neutrinos, so that's why they, they pitch their voices up. But the neutrinos are just kind of annoying and, like, generally speaking, suck. I'm happy when we brought them back in uh, 2012. They were, like, these little alien things that, like, mess up your ship or something like that, if I remember. Or, no. Are the neutrinos, the, I think in 2012, the neutrinos are little aliens, but I think they're like energy aliens. Sorry, I'm thinking of like the Gremlins episode. But like, they're like these little energy aliens or something like that, that mess up your ship. And like, I'm happy that we reinvented them for the 21st century, because yeah, the neutrinos are kind of annoying. And I think that's the one episode, because yeah, that episode does have the, does introduce the wagon, and it does introduce, you know, uh... The idea of oh this this dimension X is where Krang is trying to go and this is and he's trying to bring his army his old army back with him and it introduces that idea but season but episode four rocking with the neutrinos or whatever is just a very mediocre episode and I think a pretty song pretty solid surprisingly enough narratively wise season of eighties television because. You kind of do get, you know, and another negative I have, which I will get to in a moment, but like 
Season one is the introduction of Turtles. It's what you come to know. Episode two is the introduction of Bebop and Rocksteady. And then episode two, Bebop and Rocksteady are a bit more serious. They're probably like the most serious we've ever seen those characters ever. Uh, because they're supposed to be these like criminals that um, Shredder hired to like rough up things and steal things. Uh, rough up people and steal things. And it's like, okay, that's cool, I guess. But like... But it is just rather interesting that, like, they immediately, like, in the next season, turn goofy. And, like, I love Bebop and Rocksteady, but I don't think I've ever seen, like... And I love them because they're goofy, but I don't think I've ever seen a serious um, Bebop and Rocksteady. And a part of me wonders if they kept them serious, if future generations, or if future Team and T shows and movies would have them be serious. Like, I would love to see that alternate future. But this brings me to a, to an, then episode three is about uh, Baxter Stockman uh, setting the mousers on Splinter. Like it's all there. Like it's literally a step by step. How do you do the Ninja Turtles? And that's why I love season one and why season one for now is at the very least is my favorite season of the original 80s shows because it's literally just a step by step playbook of what what do you need to know you know if, if someone came to me and was like okay what is the quintessential ninja turtles thing that i need to watch to understand the turtles i would give them season one and then i'd give them that original movie because i think those two are the things that we always go back to when it comes to the to the turtles but drum roll please this brings me to my biggest complaint about this classic show about this classic season April O'Neil kind of sucks in this version. Like, I understand that, like, April O'Neil was, like, everyone who watched this show back in the 80s was, like, this was their sexual awakening, right? Now, I don't get that shit at all. I'm not, I'm not gonna shame you or, like, any of that shit. But let me just tell you right now that <laughs> she's a cartoon. She's literally a drawing. I understand things and she like looks pretty and I'm sure like at some point in my life I thought that's a very pretty drawing of a woman but I've never been like attracted to a drawing you know and like I feel like the people who are attracted to like 80s April O'Neil are probably also the people who are attracted to to um to like Lola Bunny and like also no shade if you're attracted to Lola Bunny but like I just feel like these characters are drawings and I understand like maybe being attracted and I've never really been like super attracted to like a character I've always been like more attracted to like real people like people that you know like oh like going through the, the streets with like my friends I was like oh yeah she's she's pretty or something like that but like I'm, I'm more attracted to I guess you could say real people than animated people and like I just feel like I just don't get the whole April thing especially this April like this April honestly kind of sucks she's kind of whiny and like at first she can't tell the difference between the Ninja Turtles and like I understand you're like in shock you're literally you've literally just learned that one aliens exist kind of you you've kind of learned that one, aliens exist. And two, you just learned that there are walking, talking, nin like kung fu fighting four turtles who know how to walk, talk, and eat and know kung fu. And then a rat who also eats, sleeps, and shits kung fu. Like, I understand that you just had your entire understanding of the universe shaken. But good God, woman. They are literally color-coded you can't learn the ninja turtles names and like she's just kind of annoying this version this at least this season of april is annoying and i don't know this actually this this uh video is actually supposed to be um about april but then i thought you want what actually i'm gonna wait i'm gonna watch this like whole show and then i'm going to um i'm gonna like or not watch this whole show but i'm gonna like watch enough of this show that I accomplished my reviewing of it. And then I'm going to, uh, at the end of the summer, maybe do an April video. But yeah, this April kind of stinks. But something I just remembered when I was talking about her discovering aliens 
is something really cool, a connection between this film or this show, uh, 87 and 2012, is that Mikey is the first person to see the, the uh, is the first person to see Crank. <clears throat> in episode four, uh, Mikey breaks into like either the Shredder's mansion or this mansion the Shredder broke in broke into, <clears throat> and yo no no it's Baxter Stockman's mansion. Breaks into like Baxter Stockman's mansion or something like that, and Crank's like hey come here. The place you're looking for is just down that hallway. Trust me, I know I'm a brain, I know I look freaky, but it's just down that hallway. Can you, you can go there? And it just makes me think, oh, that's cool. Like when I first watched this like a year ago, because I, I watched, I actually did, I got this a year ago, and then I, I watched season one, and I was just like, eh, I have so much to say, like I can't just do it in like a three minute video. So I'll wait. But yeah, I thought that was really cool because. Uh, in eighty, because in twenty twelve, which is my favorite Ninja Turtles show, um, uh, you know, Mikey is just like he's, he had a brain in him, a brain in his stomach, and then he, they they fi finally find they track down the Krang, and uh, <laughs> and you know he picks up the Krang. And he's just like, see, it's a brain thing. You didn't believe me, but it's a brain thing, and like I love it so much. Uh, oh, I love twenty twelve. I should rewatch that again. It's the 40th anniversary. Why the hell not? I should rewatch that again. Um, and I've actually reviewed. Once I'm done with this, I have reviewed all all the Ninja Turtle shows. I'm so happy about that. Uh, life uh, life accomplishment achieved. Bucket list ticked off. Right. But another bucket list thing item. Whatever. Um, also, I will just say I know that the bucket list only. Go like the phrase the bucket list only goes back as far as that movie. I know I was like a kid when that movie came out, but I want to say that's right. Like, I never heard granted, I was like, when that movie came out, when I was eight, like that movie came out when I was eight. So, honestly, also, my mother took me to that. My mother took me and my sister to go see that movie, and I understand it's like PG, but like, mom, read the room. <laughs> She also took us to see The Blind Side uh, and March of the Penguins. Now, one of, a, one of those traumatized me and my sister for life, and I'll let you guess which one, between The Blind Side and March of the Penguins. But then, but yeah, um, the award-winning documentary, the Oscar-nominated documentary, March of the Penguins. One of those traumatized me and my sister, and I will let you guess which one. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bucket List... The, N n mark that off, I guess. Yeah, but no, uh, in all seriousness, I do love season one. Uh, I don't really have the standard complaints of, oh, it's just a stupid cartoon. It's from the fucking 80s, people. It's not going to be Shakespeare, but I am impressed. Like, you know, like G1 is some of the goofiest shit I've ever seen. I love G1. I grew up watching G1 of Transformers, but like... Although, I, I saw a few of these seasons thanks to Netflix back in 2008 or 9 or whatever. I've watched a few of these, but not all of it. I haven't seen all of this show. And, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that for review. I think I'm going to review just select seasons, but yeah. <clears throat> but all that being said, right, I, I did genuinely love going back to the classic 87 Ninja Turtles show. I think that this show has every ingredient, this season specifically, has every ingredient that makes the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles work and thrive within just the, the universe. It has action, it has comedy, it understand it's building out the characters who would later become, you know, beloved by everyone. And James Avery, I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about him. James Avery, I think, also did a very good job playing Shredder. He, I, it's on this, it's actually on one of these DVDs here, but I suggest you look up on YouTube, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 87 James Avery interview, and you may be able to, to find it through there. But like James Avery, I think, had the best sort of, 
um, attitude about, and I, I have to ask um, some uh, a voice actor that I actually know if this is how they see it. But there's this, but uh, there's this quote in that interview that he said that, you know, I've, you know, he basically go, goes and says, look, I've done, I've done uh, voice work and I've done on camera work. And voice work is the most like doing plays that I've probably have ever done in my entire life. Because you have to be able to project your voice. You have to be able to do so much with your voice that people believe that in your performance. And that's the difference between doing voice acting and doing uh, on camera work. And he's so right. And I think that that's actually a very interesting, and I imagine he probably did do some plays back when he was alive. Uh, and back when he was he was younger, because he was like in his, I think in, in like his forties, late forties, when he did this and for, and French Prince of Bel Air, I think he was like in his in his like forties, fifties around that time. Uh, but like he did, uh, but he's absolutely right. Like the the key to a good voice performance is that the same thing that I think helps with on stage with being on the stage because on the stage, think about it. You're like far away from the people who are watching your thing. You're not, you know, there's like a good like distance between between the audience and the stage. And you have to be able to project your voice. You have to be able to, because they can't see you cry. You have to be able to just send out your emotional like vibage when you're on a when you're on a stage and i think james avery uh absolutely was correct when he said that uh if i'm remembering him correctly but it's been like a year since i watched that interview uh, i watched that interview actually around the time i got this so yeah but yeah like i was saying this is just quintessential ninja turtles if someone came to me today and said dan Give me, give me something that was quick and easy that, I, that so I can understand the Ninja Turtles. I would give them season one of this show, and I would give them the first uh, 90s Ninja Turtle movie and be like, okay, this is the Ninja Turtles. This is what you need to watch to understand who they are. And, you know, then you're good. You're good to go. But, yeah, um, and while this does have... Some things where it's just like, okay, like it could be a little bit more complex. It could be a little bit more smart. And thankfully we've taken these characters, we've taken this world that this show establishes and that the Mirage comics establish. We've taken them to a point where, oh, now we can, you know, uh, you know, now we can get cooking. Now we can make this, you know, these characters work in a serious storytelling telling narrative this is the og for a reason and you gotta at least i think watch season one so i recommend season one thumbs up uh so i don't know when i'm gonna do it but i do plan on reviewing a few uh an, ep an individual episode and then a few more seasons of the show uh hopefully later in the summer later in the year i can do that for y'all uh thank you for stopping by if you did and thank you for uh, watching this afterwards, if you are, uh, remember that God made you special. He loves you very much. Oh, very sorry that this live stream was a hour late, but I had some actual work stuff to do. And now uh, I'm going to get cracking on some business type stuff like ordering product and stuff like that. So remember that God made you special. He loves you very much. I hope you have a very nice week. Stay tuned till next week because my live show on Sunday is at 4 p.m. I'll make sure to do it on time this time at 4 p.m. Central. And the return of, a, of my favorite show that I do, one of the shows that I do, the return of my – or one of my favorites is next week. I'm so excited to have some of our new viewers watch it for the first time maybe. And uh, yeah, so – Thank you for subscribing if you have done that recently. Thank you for all the support. It means the world. And remember that God made you special. He loves you very much. I hope you're having a very lovely day. And as always, God bless y'all. See you next week.